We're going to animate the truck's position. We need to start it moving at a given point in time and then accelerate along the road. The first thing we need to do is to expose the relevant parameter in the sequencer to allow it to be keyframed. In this case, we want to move the object's position. This means that we need to access its matrix in order to be able to update it. In the Game Explorer, select the truck entity again, but this time drag it onto the left sequencer pane. As it is released, a dialog box opens. This is the entity's properties and displays all the parameters that are potentially accessible by the sequencer. We wish to move our object through the scene, so the parameter we want to keyframe in this case is the matrix, command load matrix, in the C system command section. Check this and click OK. Now when you expand the truck entity in the sequencer, you will see that a blank matrix track, coloured purple, has been added to the timeline. This is known as an attribute bar. We are now ready to start animating. Right click on the matrix, command load matrix, and select properties. A keyframe creation dialog box opens. From the keyframe editor drop down menu, select the design view matrix editor option and no interpolation from the interpolator menu. The red line in the central sequencer pane is known as the playhead. Clicking on it with the left mouse button enables you to drag it left and right along the timeline. Whatever its position, this is the point where a keyframe will be created on the active track when the Create Keyframe button is clicked. We will move it fully left to 0 milliseconds and create a keyframe there to act as an anchor for this track. A blue dot appears on the attribute bar beneath the playhead. A smaller blue dot also appears on the green entity bar. The end of the sequence is represented by a vertical grey bar. This can also be dragged left and right to change the overall length of a sequence. We will drag it to the right until we have about 30 seconds on the timeline. Let's assume that the storyboard dictates the truck starts to move forward after 4 seconds. We move the playhead to roughly the 4 second point. In order to set the position more accurately, you can zoom in by moving the cursor over the centre pane, holding down the mouse wheel, and moving the mouse away from you. Moving the mouse towards you will zoom out again. Whatever the cursor's position when you zoom will be the point of interest, so click on or close to the playhead. As you can see, it is possible to zoom in very close. which enables the user to place the playhead to within a single millisecond's accuracy. Click the Create Keyframe button once more to create a second keyframe at 4 seconds. This will be the point at which the truck starts to move forward. What we need to do now is to translate the truck to its new position. Let's assume the truck has to travel down the street to reach the other end at 20 seconds. We want to interpolate between the start and end positions. Zooming out from the timeline, we can move the playhead to roughly the 20 second mark. In the upper right hand corner of the sequencer window, you will notice a small pane displaying the playhead's current time position. Here we can enter a value to position the playhead. This allows you to accurately place the playhead without the need to zoom in and out. We will enter a value of 20 here. The next keyframe we create will now be at exactly 20 seconds. Next we select the Pick and Move tool from the main toolbar and select the truck in the workspace. Now we can use the tool to translate it forward on the Z axis down the street. When this happens, a second keyframe is automatically created at 20 seconds containing the truck's new position. Now as we move the playhead back towards the first frame, the truck jumps from one position to the other. This is fine, except that we want it to be moving smoothly. The reason it jumps is that we didn't instruct the sequencer to interpolate from one keyframe to the other. If we now move the playhead somewhere between the two keyframes and click on the Prev button in the editor, the playhead jumps to the previous keyframe, the one at 4 seconds. Now, from the interpolator section of the edit box, we select the linear interpolator from the drop down menu. In the sequencer, we can see that the two keyframes have become connected by a blue dotted line. 
This indicates that the keyframes now have interpolation set between them. So when we scrub the playhead, we can see the truck moves in the workspace along the street.